guys hey everyone welcome back to my channel welcome if you're new here on this channel we try to cover all things let me make sure my mic is on we try to cover all things reality tv news and gossip as well as trending topics y'all did y'all get to enjoy the solar eclipse we didn't not at all i'm in louisiana and nothing happened as a matter of fact it's raining right now uh we were supposed to get like we're not in the line of totality but we were supposed to get like you know, we were supposed to be able to tell. I mean, the line of totality is like right above Louisiana. So we were actually supposed to get a little darkness. No, nope, didn't happen. Woke up with an overcast and now it's raining. So um, a lot of people thought that, you know, it was going to be the end. So I'm glad we're all still here. Hey, how you doing? Um, Anyways, I got an email earlier that Janelle Evans Easton X nathan has been arrested and y'all last i heard he was in rehab so i'm like how did this happen literally he's had so much going on in his life i mean from liver cancer homeless being arrested twice within the span of like six weeks um he's a veteran i don't know for sure if he ever deployed but i do think he has ptsd i think he's been diagnosed with ptsd um I know he struggles with alcohol addiction and that contributes to his anger. I think there's other things that probably con contribute to his anger, uh, such as like, they call it like roid rage. And this is me speculating, but I remember whenever he was with Janelle, there were like discussions of him using steroids and we've heard of, you know, roid rage or whatever. So I wonder, I wonder either way, you guys, he was arrested. He is being held without bail in Las Vegas. Also, um, David was live on Tickety Talk this past weekend, and somebody brought up Nathan. Somebody said, Nathan, it's a shame that Nathan doesn't get to see his son. And he basically said, like, oh, Nathan could see his son if he wanted to. He just doesn't want to, which I thought was interesting because I'm like, we all hear different stories, you know, from one story to the next. Uh, Janelle doesn't let me. You don't want to. So I thought that was interesting that David's like, but who do we believe here? Who do, who do we believe? I mean, I have a hard time believing anything that comes out of David's mouth, Janelle's mouth, even Nathan's mouth at this point. Um, so yeah, he was like, no, you know, Nathan's, this is what David said. He said, Nathan's a pretty good guy, um, but he just lives so far away. Financially, he probably can't afford to come see Kaiser, but we've never... Kaiser's not kept from him. He just can't afford to come see him, basically. Um, and then he said, somebody said, Nathan should beat you up. And he was like, oh, Nathan can't beat me up. Nathan can't beat me up. Nathan can't fight. And I, my mind went back to the reunion where Janelle had those, like, cornrows in her hair that made her forehead look, like, weird, you know? And um, Janelle wanted Kaiser to come see her, but Kaiser didn't want to or whatever. And there was almost this fight. And Janelle and David was standing outside of Nathan's room, Nathan's like dress room or whatever. And Janelle was like telling Kaiser bye. And David said, don't let them be mean to you. And whenever he said that, Nathan got up and walked over and was like, hey, I'm right here, bud. You got something to say? Because I'm right here. You can talk to me. Don't talk to my son. And at that point, David was like, I'm good. Let's go, Janelle. I'm good. And Doris, Nathan's mom, was like, we need to drug test y'all. And David was like, we need to drug test you. And she's like, let's go. Do you guys remember that? Hey, Stephanie, I see your comments all the time. I'm so glad you could be here today. Thank you so much. Thank you. I know. I know, damsel. That is the worst part of this is these kids that are involved in this. Now, here we have Nathan arrested. Kaiser, how's it gonna be Kaiser? And Nathan has a daughter as well. So I was really hoping that Nathan would get it together. He was in rehab, so I was really hoping that he would get it together. But yes, that reunion, I'm telling you, I'm into body language now, but even back then, before I really knew much about it, you could read the body language that Nathan was not playing. Whenever Dave, David was like, don't let them scare you, Nathan was done, he had enough. He walked over there in his white button up shirt with his muscles busting out of it he's like hey he put his hand up he's like i'm right here you don't have to talk and i'm like nathan's like ready he's like it was tense it was tense and then david like i said you don't even got to be like a body like i wasn't back then 
And I could see David just like kind of cower. He's like, all right, Janelle, let's go. Let's go, Janelle. I'm like, he don't want none of Nathan. So in the TikTok, when people was like, Nathan can beat you up. He's like, Nathan can't even fight. He can't even fight. I'm like, dude, you were scared of that reunion. You jetted out quick. You were standing there running your mouth until Nathan walked up and was like, come on, buddy. If you want it, let's, like, let's do it. You know, if you want to rock, we can roll. And he's like, nope, I'm going to roll out as a matter of fact. So I thought that was funny that he was talking like that about Nathan. Because I think Nathan could take him. That's just my opinion. Anyways, let's go into his arrest. Let's see what we know, okay? So, yep, Nathan is once again behind bars. Team Mom fans over on Instagram broke the news. I'm telling you, Team Mom fans, they get the exclusives. So, Team Mom fans over on Instagram was the first to announce the news that Nathan had been arrested. According to court documents, Nathan was charged with a specialty court sanction and is currently in jail at the Clark County Detention Center in Las Vegas. So, Previously, we found out that Nathan had been, um, let's see, hold up, let me go back a little bit. As the Ashley previously reported, Nathan has been being monitored in court since he was arrested for attempting to his sister last year. He pled guilty to that crime in September and had his criminal case moved to Clark County, Nevada's Veterans Treatment Court. The Veterans Treatment Court provides treatment to veterans, to veteran defendants, and helps them be treated for addiction, helps them gain life skills and education to ease them back into society. Since then, Nathan has had bi-weekly status check-ins at the Veteran Court. In March, Nathan had been given the okay to move into a group home in Las Vegas for homeless veterans or vets who were at risk of becoming homeless. So in March, just last month, he moved into a group home for like homeless veterans. Now it's being said that Nathan was not in attendance at one of his most recent veteran court status check-in hearings on April 2nd due to him being in the hospital. While the records did not provide more details, Nathan was also listed as being in the hospital while he was away at detox slash rehab back in February. His next schedule for a status check-in is on April 16th. An employee at the Clark County Detention Center confirmed that Nathan's arrest was likely due to him violating one or more of his guilty plea agreement from 2023. So he was on probation. Nathan was on probation. He had to wear like an ankle monitor and all of this. So under probation, you get stipulations, you have guidelines and rules you have to abide by. And if you break any of those guidelines, you violate your pro you violate your probation and you could go to jail. So here's what we know. We don't know nothing. But we know he's in jail. He violated. We don't know why. Um, he will be held in the jail without bail to make sure he attends his hearing on the 16th. Nathan's case is scheduled to remain in veterans court, which is, I guess, where it should be. Um, like I said, when Nathan pled guilty to the, of his sister, he agreed to abide by a list of terms and conditions. Those terms include participating in and complying with the veterans court program, complying with all the terms of his sober living placement, not using or possessing drugs or alcohol, complying with the set curfew, following counseling requirements, agreeing to have only one cell phone and allowing it to be searched, providing the passwords not using anyone else's phone or allowing anyone to use his phone. Oh, wow. It is unknown which of these terms, if any, that Nathan violated to get this sanction. So he violated his probation. We just don't know. I used to root for Nathan. I really thought that he was a good guy for a while, but then I'm like, Not so much. I mean, after he tried to eh, eh, two women in a matter of like two months, I'm like, okay, he's really got some, he's really, he needs some help before he kills someone. And David said, take it with a grain of salt, throw it over your shoulder if you want to. But Nate, uh, David said uh, that Nathan was arrested for eh, eh, his sister. And now his sister is actually trying to help him get out of it. Like 
she like went and spoke on his behalf to the DA, claimed that it didn't happen or something along those lines. Like she now has tried to help him out. And David said, David said, that's really sad if she accused him of something he didn't do. And I'm like, there's no way he didn't do that. Well, my two cents. Nathan's sister called the police and said, please come to my house. My brother's making threats. He's drinking. He's telling me he's going to me. Please come to the house. They don't show up. She calls back. Her voice is drastically different. I mean, her voice goes from talking like mine um, to like, like she's been smoking for 30 years, 50 years, 60 years. I mean, it's very dry. It's, I mean, her, it is like her vocal cords were damaged is basically what it sounded like. You can tell something happened to that woman. If Nathan didn't, somebody did. When she called back, she literally called back saying, my brother just choked me. He literally was choking, choking me, yelling at me, saying he was going to kill me. Um, I, I called you guys and I asked y'all to come and y'all didn't come and you tried to kill me. So, sounds like it happened to me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, stereo use plus alcohol use will cause people to really hurt other. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I agree. I agree, Kay Curry. Um, Nathan is one of those that should should not have alcohol. Um, he already has. Hey, Melissa. He already has. You know, liver cancer, and this is not the first time that he's put his hands on a woman, right? So, about just a few weeks before he was arrested for that with his sister, he was arrested for doing something very similar to a girlfriend. TBI can cause a lot of anger also. That's true. Traumatic brain injury as well. I'm trying to think if David Eason was ever deployed. I, I don't know. Not David Eason. Was Nathan Griffin? I know he was military. He did go to Afghanistan. and it's, Okay. This is Reddit. So, I, you know. Okay, he is suffering from PTSD and is 100% disabled for military after military services. Yeah. Um, and him and his wife are not together. How is he homeless with all these things wrong with him? The VA doesn't. Let me tell you something. My husband is a vet and the VA does not help. I mean, my husband has PTSD. Uh, we've questioned if he has TBI, to be quite honest. And we have went to the VA, and my husband should qualify for 100%, no doubt. My husband has extreme anxiety. He doesn't like to be around large crowds. He struggles to leave the house, like, to go anywhere, really. Like, Walmart, the Dollar Store, staying in this area is, like, okay. But, like, to actually go places he's not familiar with, it is a big struggle for him. Like, he should... He has a really bad anxiety, so he should absolutely qualify. That, among other things, he has injuries to his body. But yeah, they no. If I could do anything, if I was to somehow be, become a millionaire, that is one thing that me and my husband talked about: is we would start a nonprofit organization for veterans to help them because they do not get the help they need. They really don't. Ah, Kathy said, "Not that in thirty years I might have thought about it for a second, but I love him. I'm sure I'm annoying a little." Yeah. Yeah. Um, even, yeah. And the VA homes for vets are swarming with drugs. Exactly. Oh, wow, Jamie. I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. We were actually told we needed to fight it because here's the thing. The person that told us to, to, um, to get him like recertified, to get it increased was the, our, the vet lady here. The lady that's over the Veterans Administration here where we live was like, he needs to get a new rating. He should qualify for 100%, no doubt. She knows us. She knows us, right? So she's like, he needs a new rating. He should qualify for 100%, no doubt. We go, we go through all the doctor's appointments. We go through all this time and energy. What's crazy is doctor's appointments. My husband doesn't like leaving the house, like especially to go like an hour away. But he is literally going to doctor's appointments after doctor's appointments after doctor's appointments. And then they're like, no. Denied. And the lady was like, the, the veteran's lady was like, no, like, try again. That doesn't make any sense. 
So, I mean, the VA is not, it does not do what it should do. It does not help their vet. Um, so I am seeing here that he does have PTSD and he is 100% disabled and that he did serve in Afghanistan. I'm curious with what years he served. Um, either way, it's a very sad situation. PTSD on top of drinking and possibly steroids is not a good combination. Right, you're having a lot that didn't happen. Oh, I'm so sorry. Thank you, Kathy. I've told my husband, let's just keep pushing, but he's like, I'm done. I'm done. So, um, anyways, you guys, so that's what we know right now is he is in jail in Las Vegas. He was living in like a veteran provided uh homing assistance program for veterans who were either homeless or on the verge of becoming homeless. He had been struggling with addiction and he has been on probation. And like I said, so that happened with his sister in September of last year. In like August, just weeks prior, him and his wife separated. He gets a girlfriend and he does something very similar to the girlfriend. He flips out on her, drags her down the stairs of the house by her hair, uh -uh her. And he actually texted his brother-in-law. It was like, I did something bad. And the brother-in-law was like, is everything okay? And he's like, no. So the brother-in-law called the girlfriend and was like, are you okay? And she was like, no. And the brother-in-law called the cops. And the cops got there and saw the marks and, you know, realized what happened. He was arrested then for strangling the girlfriend, but she ended up not moving forward with, with, with charges. So not a lot came from that. Um, yeah, they don't want to pay their vets 100% disability. The U.S. has never taken care of the vets. Like I, I agree. I agree. Yeah, my husband's like, any news on your cousin? Um, my cousin was found, and um, we had his funeral on March 10th. I think it was March 10th. He was found exactly three weeks of the day that he had went missing um we are waiting for the autopsy to come back to find out exactly hopefully we can get some detail hopefully we'll know what happened um but as of right now we don't know he was found in the river so um he needs help and someone to hold him accountable i agree i am sending prayers to nathan i mean i hope he can get some help i really hope he can get some help and maybe stay in it, here's the thing. I was going to say maybe staying in jail for some time will help him, but I don't think jail helps people with addiction, mental health, because everybody that I've ever talked to about jail, they're like, you can get drugs in jail. Almost just as easy as off the streets. So I don't know. I don't know, you guys. Strangling is a sense of control and usually considered a common form of crime of passion. He did that to his girlfriend as well as his sister. Yeah, I don't think jail will be the right answer for him. I was going to say maybe jail would help, but I really don't think it would be. Hey, Bree. So what we know is Nathan is in jail for violating um, a stipulation of his probation. We don't know what he did to violate. But when we know more, I'll let you guys know. So you guys leave your thoughts in the comment section below. We're going to come back and talk about Gypsy Rose Blanchard. She filed for divorce today. Now, Friday, she was getting a new nose. Today, she's filing for a divorce. Ryan, he put out a TikTok where he said he was blindsided. So we're going to come back and talk about Gypsy Rose Blanchard filing for a divorce. Ryan saying he was blindsided. And the new nose. So join me back here in about 30 minutes or so to talk about Gypsy Rose Blanchard. Like, share, subscribe. Listen, guys, on my analytics, it says that like 40% of you are subscribed. So if you watch me, please hit that subscribe button. I am trying so hard to get to 100,000 subscribers. Um, so make sure you're still subscribed. Sometimes YouTube will unsubscribe. Um, so just check that subscribe button. And if you watch me, please hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button. Leave your comments. I went to college with him at Trinit Tech. He came to class a couple times smelling like alcohol and a bad attitude. Oh, no. Wow. Wow. Oh, thank you. Hey, Candida. Hey, Amber. I know, Michelle. I try to encourage him to, and, and maybe he will, but right now he's kind of done with it. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, thank Nathan for his service. It's it's unfortunate and very sad that this is how his life has turned out. Thank you, Kathy. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Thank y'all so much. I used to not believe Janelle about Nathan's behavior back on the team mom days because I know now it makes me wonder. I remember that time Nathan was arrested and he's like, please, Janelle, I didn't do anything. Why am I being arrested? Is it, is it because I'm a guy? I wish I was a girl or something like that. And um, I was like, I don't think he did anything. Thank you, Jess. Thank you so much. I was like, I don't think he did anything. I think she's lying, but I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, you guys, like, share, subscribe, and I will see you guys back here in about 30 minutes to talk about Gypsy Rose Blanchard. Bye, guys.